I don't know what prize picks was watching in DeAndre Hopkins' first game back, uh, but the man saw 14 targets, and it seemed like Kyler literally didn't see other players on the field. DeAndre Hopkins is playing against Minnesota on Sunday. Minnesota currently allows the fifth most passing yards per game and has the second worst coverage grade per PFF. All right. Don't get me wrong. They have a good overall defense, a good pass rush, and, and a lot of you know admirable qualities about their defense, but their coverage grades have been absolute shit, and DeAndre Hopkins is going to see another double-digit you know, target game. Okay, Kyler is only looking at this dude. 67 and a half receiving yards on Sunday. Please go wrap that shit up in a, in a cute little bow. All right? Your mortgage will be happy. If you're new to Prize Picks and you have not yet signed up, when you do it for the first time, when you download the app Prize Picks, PrizePicks.com, use promo code BDGE. They are going to double whatever you put down on that app. So if you put 10, they're going to give you 20. If you put 50, they're going to give you 100, up to $100 deposit match. All right, go nail DeAndre Hopkins, 67 and a half receiving yards. But before we get into the waiver wire, we obviously had some breaking news last night. Um, James Robinson, running back for the Jaguars, who literally saw zero carries last week. What an odd storyline for James Robinson. Just like an amazing career, Achilles tear, comes back, and we're like, holy shit, James Robinson, fucking, he's just him again, you know? Rips off a couple amazing weeks, and you're like, he's the guy, and then just gets absolutely face-planted. Travis Etienne takes over the backfield. He gets moved to the Jets in, uh, in the lieu of the Brees Hall torn ACL. So James Robinson has been terrible this year, realistically. Outside of the first couple weeks where he had a lot of fantasy points, he hadn't been a good running back whatsoever. He had a couple big plays, but besides those plays, like on a per-play basis, he's been very, very underwhelming. Now, he moves over to New York, and Michael Carter is... I think Michael Carter is the guy. I think Michael Carter will see from... Week eight to the remaining remainder of the season, he will be the pass catcher. He will be the two and four minute drill. He will get most of the valuable touches. I think Michael Carter is a is a solid, you know, RB RB eighteen to twenty ish range. So you're getting like an RB two, maybe mid to, to low end RB two for the remainder of the season, twelve to fifteen, maybe seventeen, eighteen touches per week, right? I like Michael Carter. James Robinson, listen, Brees Hall was amazing as the early down guy. And obviously catching a ton of passes, but James Robinson's not going to catch a ton of passes. Brees Hall wasn't awesome because he was on the goal line getting a lot of carries, which is what James Robinson might get. But Michael Carter is good on the goal line as well. So I think James Robinson kind of probably gets like, you know, anywhere from 8 to 12 empty carries a game in New York. Okay. They also just lost uh, Elijah Vera Tucker for the season, which is he was one of their, you know, better uh better lineman, right? He was someone who's kind of having like a breakout year, someone who's really coming into his own. Uh, and that's a huge hit for this offensive line as well. So a guy like James Robinson, who probably needs holes to be opened up for him in order to have success. It's just not a great situation. So James Robinson, like, I guess you're, if you own him, you're excited only because like there was literally nowhere else to go, but up when it goes from the Jaguars now, because he didn't get a fucking touch last game. So I think he gets eight to 10 touches that are almost worthless at this point. Um, so he is, he's not a guy that I'm ready to start right away. Maybe hopefully we see something out of him, but it's Michael Carter's backfield. and I'm not overly excited about James Robinson, but we were going to talk about maybe Ty Johnson at the end of this video at some point as like a weird waiver wire pickup that people continue to like for whatever reason, but he's completely off the radar now, but let's get into the actual waiver wire. <laughs> Uh, not too spicy of a week. I try to tell more so tell the story of, of the uh, the waiver wire uh, when I do these videos rather than going through each individual player. I think it just it just helps to give an overall sense of like what you should be doing with your fab dollars. And if you have the number one waiver wire, all that stuff is also available on bdge.co. We have our waiver wire rankings there for you if you don't want to listen to the videos. But there are a couple running backs at the top of the list this week. We obviously have Gus Edwards returning from his ACL first game. Bike 16 carries, two touchdowns, seems to be the lead back immediately for Baltimore. They do play against Tampa Bay, which is obviously a really, really tough run defense, but it feels like since Dobbins is going to be out for the long term, Gus Edwards is uh, a dude that they absolutely trust there in Baltimore. So he's a dude that I would drop some fab on because he'll probably be a really solid RB2, you know, probably more of the low end RB2 for the remainder of the season. I still think they get Drake a little bit involved. He got 11 carries, still didn't produce with them, but still got the touches. Justice Hill's there and Lamar Jackson just running it like 72 times a game. So Gus Edwards, top guy on my list this week. Deonta Foreman also looks super spicy. Chuba Hubbard uh, left the game with a little bit of an injury. He was playing pretty well in the first half. Clearly going to be a committee, but Deonta Foreman is clearly a good back. He's now shown this in back-to-back -back seasons when he's gotten the role there. So uh, when it comes to Gus, I would drop 20 to 25 percent of my fab on him. When it comes to Deonta Foreman, I'm a little bit lower, probably uh, uh, around 15 percent. They do play the Falcons, which is a great matchup for running backs, obviously. So Deonta Foreman could be a guy that you throw into your lineup ASAP this week. 
And when we're looking at like the rest of the players on the waiver wire for the week, I don't think we have any like real immediate impact players. They're all kind of like mid players that you're kind of filling in holes maybe through the bye weeks or you want a little bit more depth at the wide receiver position. So we'll just rip off a bunch of names. We have like Wandell Robinson, who's put together back to back games where he's been super involved. And now Daniel Bellinger, who's one of the top targets for the Giants, is going to be out for uh, for quite a minute with that disgusting injury that he got you know, poked in his eye and then all of the blood out of his entire brain looked like it came out. But uh, Wanda Robinson has been super involved. They play Seattle. Uh, he is a rookie that had a ton of draft capital. So it seems like he is here for the long term. Maybe Kadarius Tony gets moved at the trade deadline. Maybe that's just me projecting. But Wandell seems to be my top wide receiver for the week. Uh, I'm not overly excited, but if you're in a PPR league, I think he's a guy who probably consistently get you double digit PPR points going forward you have guys like Garrett Wilson with the other wide receivers kind of up in the air right we have Corey Davis tweaked his knee we have Elijah Moore just like doing a fucking sit-in in in the middle of the season don't really know what's going on there maybe both of those guys play this week maybe neither of them do but Garrett Wilson will be the next guy up I'm not overly excited about him because he hasn't really shown much this year to begin with Joshua Palmer is I guess an interesting name he's like such a mid player he's like so so I if, if I could if I could like put together prototype from a lab an average NFL wide receiver it's Josh Palmer but he's in a he's attached to a very above average quarterback it's a stupid fucking way to describe Justin Herbert he's attached to a very good quarterback okay and now Mike Williams is dealing with a high ankle sprain they do have a bye this week right so you're not gonna be able to use him right now but uh long term this could be an injury that Mike Williams either takes a month to come back from or is back in like two to three weeks but is far uh, less than 100%. So Palmer could play a very big role with Keenan Allen back, who's going to be the one there, but Palmer will be probably the next uh, guy up in the offense. Paris Campbell's been ripping off big games, so someone to look at. I don't know if I trust the consistency with Sam Ellinger now there at quarterback, so a little bit up in the air there as well. Um, some running backs we kind of skipped over in that midst of, of that tier. None of these guys I'm putting more than like five bucks on. I think Wandell, you could probably go between the eight and $10 range, but everybody else on this list is far as, as far as I'm concerned, bargain shopping at this point. And again, I'm just kind of reading off my rankings right now, going through and giving you a quick explanation on these dudes, but it's all mid-wide receivers. You have a couple high-end running backs that aren't really even high-end, but Gus is probably the prize jewel of this week after Kenyon Drake was the fucking guy last week, dropped all my money on him, started him, and now it's Gus Evers. Actually, fantasy football is out of control. There is absolutely no sense of control in this fucking game. I don't know why we do it. I don't know why we pretend like we have any sense of what's going to happen ever. Makes no sense. But we must proceed. Uh, Tyler Argier finally had like a decently good fantasy game, right? 15 plus touches, got into the end zone for the first time. Cordell Patterson is going to be back soon. Damian Williams probably going to be back soon, but they do play Carolina this week. So I think this is a game where it's kind of like a perfect storm where you have like one good week left to squeeze out of Algier. So I would throw five bucks on him if you need a flex play because he's going to get 15 touches and they're playing against Carolina. The other like interesting names, I guess, Marquise Goodwin had a really big game with DK Metcalf out and DK Metcalf somehow is not even ruled out of next week's game, but he's, he's going to miss the game against the Giants. The Giants have had a tough defense, but Goodwin is a playmaker and Geno Smith is playing at an unbelievably high level right now. So it's weird to say this but I almost just want the wide receiver attached to him like obviously Lockett's going to be the guy but Goodwin you know he could he could have another splash play he's a fucking speedster down the field that's kind of what DK Metcalf was but you know if Gino takes a couple shots to Marquise Goodwin he could pay off I'm not again three to five dollars on a dude like this because I don't expect consistency whatsoever everybody else is kind of gross down here man it is gross I still kind of like Latavius Murray as a, as a sneaky ad again if he was dropped because he's splitting time with Melvin Gordon. Uh, Mike Boone got hurt, so it's going to be a two-way committee again, which, again, uh, do you want that in Denver's backfield? And It's not great. Rondell Moore kind of dropped off the face of the earth with D-Hop back. Uh, Greg Dolchich is a dude that I told you guys to pick up last week, and now he's put together two bike-to-bike weeks of high-level fantasy point production, man. So if, you have, if you're in a tight end premium league or you need a tight end to fill in, Greg Dolchich seems to be high-level rookie. You don't see it often, but he's there, and they're making Alberto a healthy scratch, so Greg Dolchich is the guy for you. Uh, Um, What else we got going on here? IR slots that you can throw people on like Jameson Williams is that dude. Traylon Burks is that dude. So if you got an IR slot that's open and any, either of those dudes are sitting on your waiver wire, now is for sure the time to go pick them up. I guess Harrison Bryant is like a little bit intriguing at the tight end position because David Njoku is going to be out two to five weeks. Apparently Harrison Bryant really hasn't done much at the NFL level. So I, d- I don't think I'm ready to like start him right away, but he has a little bit of upside because he's kind of an exciting name. I guess he's not fucking exciting whatsoever, but might as well throw him on your radar if you're in like a super, super deep league. 